in this video i will talk about some dynamic programming patterns that you can use to solve problems on code forces this video is just for fun do not worry too much about the implementation details of all the ideas that i am going to discuss just focus on the core logic of what we are trying to achieve let us start with the very simple problem of finding the longest increasing subsequence of an array how do you come up with the dp formulation for this problem a common technique that i have is to start with any dp formulation that you can think of and then think about will you be able to refresh the dp when you append a new element to the end of the prefix so for example a beginner might come up with this dp definition that is for this prefix dp of i will store the longest increasing subsequence of this prefix because naturally this is what the problem asks us to compute but ask yourself when you append a new element to the end of this prefix will you be able to take take the best subsequence from here and simply append this element to get answer plus 1 that is not possible because you also need to ensure that this element is greater than the last element of the subsequence that you have already created so this gives us a hint that we need to track some more information in our dp but what if we go all in like what if we do a brute force and we say that okay for this particular prefix we will store all the subsequences that are possible and the number of such such subsequences is equal to 2 to the power i so let us store all the subsequence for this prefix in a set and keep it here here for each prefix now what happens when you append a new element so when you append a new element you can notice that if you have all the subsequences of this prefix then you can go through the entire set and you can manually check the last element of that subsequence and if it is less than or equal to this element then you can simply take that subsequence and expand it over here to get a better subsequence and this approach will definitely work but the time complexity would be 2 to the power n into n why because for every prefix you will need to store the set of all subsequences how do we optimize it in all dp problems the core idea for optimization is to divide these 2 to the power n subsequences divide this 2 to the power n subsequences into equivalence classes and by that i mean sure you have 2 to the power n subsequences but the only property that you are looking for is the last element of the subsequence so if you have a subsequence 1 2 and 3 and you have another subsequence 2 comma 3 they are practically equivalent why because their last elements are equal so let us create an equivalence class where we will say that if two subsequences end in a same end in the same index then we will say that they lie in the same equivalence class so an equivalence class will definitely partition the set of 2 to the power n subsequences into various parts and the sum of all these parts should be equal to 2 to the power n and each shaded section represent all the subsequences ending at any index i then you can notice that you don't really need to store the entire set in your dp you can just store their equivalence classes and the best element from their equivalence class that is by best element i mean the element in the equivalence class that has the maximum length so if you define your dps dp of i is the alias ending at index i you will partition it into multiple uh, sets and for each prefix you only rep you only store one representative of the equivalence class and that representative would be equal to the longest subsequence length that ends at that index now you can see that 
to perform the transitions you can simply uh, take a guess on the last element in that subsequence it could be either of these so suppose it is this at index j then you can expand that equivalence class to the one that ends at index i so this definitely works but the time complexity is o of n square how do we optimize it further in all dp problems that involve optimization the idea is to focus on some creative definition of the equivalence class sure you can have equivalence class partitioned on the last element of the subsequence but you need if you can come up with something more creative that might lead to some optimizations so now you can see that if the elements are between 1 to 10 to the power 6 then if you define an equivalence class where you say that subsequences that end at the same element are identical uh, are equivalent then that will also partition the set into some equivalence classes right so now we will not worry about the index anymore we will say that two subsequences lie in the same equivalence class if they end in the same element so for example if you have 1 2 3 and 2 comma 3 so you will say that they lie in the same equivalence class even though this 3 might appear over here and this 3 might appear over here now with this definition of the equivalence class let us now store the entire set so let, let us store this entire uh, equivalence class for any index what would that look like so that would simply be a number line on 0 to 10 to the power 6 why because an equivalence class can be uniquely determined by the last element of the subsequence and that last element can be any number in 0 to 10 to the power 6 so if for each prefix I give you this number line and from this number line of course you can uh, infer each of these equivalence classes then what happens when you append a new element at the end as soon as you append a new element at the end you want to know for this prefix how many subsequences can you create and all the subsequences are nicely partitioned into these equivalence classes so you can simply look at the number line for this prefix then which equivalence class will this element go in it will go in the equivalence class at this position position v so you locate this position and now you can see that you can expand any of the previous subsequences that are to the left of this element and append this element to create a new increasing subsequence because uh, the last element is less than v and you can get a better length over here so all you have to do is in this number line you just need to refresh the representative of this equivalence class by looking for the maximum element here and then updating it over here with the value plus one but now you will notice that storing the equivalence classes for each prefix is not really feasible because they can be of the order 10 to the power 6 so you need to store 10 to the power 6 numbers here 10 to the power 6 numbers here and so on however you can notice that computing the answer for this just requires us to look into the equivalence class or the number line for this last prefix we do not care about this prefix or this prefix or this prefix and so on so that means that we can simply reuse the number line that we had created over here and transfer it to here so we can simply swap the number lines over here that can be done in o of 1 so if we can keep swapping the number lines we won't have to store 10 to the power 6 integers for each index anymore and in this fashion every time you append a new element you will be able to update the representative of the equivalence classes by uh, looking at the prefix so all you need is a data structure that can query the maximum value uh, to the left and that can be done using a segment tree and hence the time complexity is n log n now what if i modify the problem to ask you the maximum sum longest increasing subsequence and remember that your goal should be to first make sure that the length of the subsequence is maximal and only then should you maximize the sum now it is clear that 
uh, if you consider that same partitioning as before that is two elements will lie in the same equivalence class if their last element is equal then every time you you append a new element suppose you append element v over here of course the only subsequences that are increasing and can be created they should be from this prefix but they also have to be the longest increasing so you locate the maximum uh, subsequence length in this prefix and if there are ties then you break the ties by maximum sum so that would mean that in your dp you also now need to store the maximum sum of that equivalence class so, so you you had partitioned that set into multiple equivalence classes so for each equivalence class you maintain the maximum sum and using this technique you can track the maximum sum li as, as well now let's look at another variation where you need to find out <coughs> for every length or for a fixed length k what is the maximum sum that you can up, obtain for any subsequence that is increasing now we don't care about the longest increasing subsequence we we want the answer for any given length k and we want to maximize the sum so for this you can notice that we had partitioned the set into equivalence classes depending upon the last element of the subsequence but if we want to create a subsequence of length k we would have to expand the subsequence of length k minus 1 but our equivalence classes does not have any information of the length of the subsequences because we consider them identical but they are not identical anymore so what we can do is we can partition this equivalence classes into further divisions such that we also track the length as well as the last element of the subsequence so we will say that two subsequence are identical if and only if their last elements match and their uh, lengths match so using this you can notice that even though the initial number of subsequences was 2 to the power n the only set of subsequences that we will need to analyze is equal to k into 10 to the power 6 which is equal to the last element right now <clears throat> how do you figure out the transitions for this dp so if you have length as k and you append an element over here now you will notice that with this number line you are not no longer just storing the number line in each position you will also maintain a vector that contains the uh, further partitions that we just did based on the length then for any length you need to take the contribution from anything on the left right because the only constraint is it should be an increasing subsequence so you can take contribution from anything on the left and increase the sum by uh, this value and you figure out the maximum sum in this area and increase the sum by this value and the length of the subsequence would increase so if you are taking contribution from k it would go to k plus 1 now consider that same problem as before but now there are weights for elements so uh, element a1 has weight w1 a2 has weight w2 and so on and now you need to find out the increasing the maximum weight sum of an increasing subsequence of length k so even for this problem you can notice that it's exactly the same as before because previously we were compute computing the maximum sum right but now we need to compute the maximum weight sum which is given as part of a different array but previously <coughs> for a1 we were using the weight as a1 that is how the sum was being computed so all we have to do is in our algorithm we can replace a1 with the w1 whenever we are computing the sum so in this partition you will now store the length and the uh, and the maximum weight sum for any subsequence so the dp of i would be the union that is this number line and the increasing subsequence that ends at any value and any length as well as the maximum w sum that you are, you are uh, encountering right and then you can update it like so so previously we were just adding a of v now you need to add w of v and finally 
let us look at a variation where you are given three arrays you are given the array you are given the weight and you are given the color and you want to find out the maximum weight sum of an increasing subsequence such that all the elements in your answer have different color no two elements should have the same color so here also you can see that uh, previously we used to call a subsequence identical if their length was same and their last element was same but that would not work anymore because we need to differentiate the colors between them so what we can do is we can maintain a bit mask of the colors that is the set of colors that has been chosen in the subsequence then this set will further get divided into multiple smaller sets and then for this number line you now need to maintain the length of the subsequence the bit mask of the colors that you have chosen and the maximum weight sum that you have uh, got right then what happens when you append a new element how do you figure out the new number line for this element to figure out the new number line for this element you can notice that you will only take contributions from the left hand side because the last element of the old subsequence has to be smaller than this uh, subsequent this element so you only take elements you only take contributions from the left hand side and when you are taking the contribution there can be multiple possibilities of length as well as the bit mask which represents the color so you only take contributions from the bit masks where the color of this current element is not present hence you can solve the problem using segmentary for computing the maximum in this region but for any k and any bit mask you should only take contributions from valid bit masks and uh, this is the 90 percent of the solution of problem f that appeared in code forces around 960 968 you can pause the video and <coughs> read the problem description it is essentially the same thing as as we discussed it's just that in this problem the constraints for the number of color is very high such that bit masks cannot be directly applied but uh, but the core dp idea is same and the editorial presents you with some randomization technique you can take a look at it but even be without the randomization technique make sure that you uh, understand the dp approach well